Joining me now is Democratic Senator from New Mexico, Martin Heinrich. Senator Heinrich, it is good to see you. And let me start there. There was a lot of anger last week. It sounds like you guys had a family meeting and, and calmed down and everybody said, hey, we may be mad at him, but he's still a member of the Democratic family, uh, meaning Joe Manchin. Is that a fair way to look at things this week? You know, I think there's just a recognition that we have to get as much done for the American people as we possibly can. Uh, but having lived through the last year in my state where fires have raged in a way that I have never seen before in my life, uh, where the Rio Grande is drying, where our, our reservoirs are empty, there's still a huge amount of frustration. And, and I think if we take Senator Manchin at his word that this is about uh, inflation, we know that 41 percent of the inflation that we're seeing is directly tied to increasing prices in fossil fuel commodities like gasoline. And then that ripples through the entire supply chain. So we're trying to find a way forward that recognizes that it really is our addiction to fossil fuels that is driving the out of control frustration and, and inflation that our constituents are feeling. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you think that there should have been a separate climate bill? I understand for procedural purposes it was eventually going to have to be lumped in together because of this 50 vote necessity uh, that that the Senate, the way the Senate works these days. And I'm not going to we're not going to debate whether that's a good idea. I think a lot of us know that this is uh, also difficult. But I, what's hard to sort of grasp here, Senator, is what is the climate bill? It's always been part of this other bill. And I do well, think that maybe that gets to a little bit of the uh, problem that that folks have had in getting the public's understanding and backing of this. How would you describe the climate provisions as a standalone bill? So the, the, the heart of this are really the tax incentives that will drive forward uh, industries like wind and solar, industries around clean hydrogen, uh, lots of other technologies like storage that we already know how to do, that are here and ready, but need to have their costs driven down so that they really take over the, the market in a way that, uh, that really squeezes carbon out of our entire economy. And honestly, I think that every bill we do, whether it's an appropriations bill or whether it's a mm -hmm. policy bill, we need to be doing climate all the time now. Because as you've seen from not only Texas, the Southwest, Europe, um, it, we've reached a point where our climate is truly at a tipping point. We're, we're losing this battle and losing control of the weather. And we need to be acting with every single opportunity, whether that's the administration, whether that's Congress, right. whether that's state and local leadership. Does uh, declaring a national climate emergency, is that relevant as far as you're concerned it, for policy? I think it is because there are certain authorities and we saw just how uh, how far authorities can be taken under the previous president. So I have urged the president to do that. I think we saw a good first step from the president today, the announcements that he made. And I'm hoping that that's just the first salvo in a long list of executive mm -hmm. actions that can make a meaningful difference in decarbonizing our economy. You know, there's a bit of a philosophical debate within the Biden administration on executive actions, and it seems to be the president is hesitant to push the legal envelope and essentially put ex actions into the hands of the courts. Um, others are arguing, hey, push the envelope and see what happens, uh, you know, make the courts rein you in. Where do you stand on this? Well, I think as long as there are not 51 votes for decisive uh, climate action in the Congress, in the Senate in particular, um, I think it, that it's really incumbent on the President of the United States to step up and lean in and, and make sure they do their homework so they're not inviting a defeat at the courts. But we need to lead now, and we need to show the American people uh, the, the sort of decisiveness and the action that people are really clamoring for. Well, let me talk about the public. You know, it feels like the concern about climate is there, but it's not front of mind. It's sort of like, it's like the concern that I have that my roof doesn't leak. 
you know, when it's leaking, it's a front of mind concern, right? When it's not, sure. you know, hey, I always got it. It does seem as if the electorate isn't there yet as seeing this as a front of mind. Maybe that's due to inflation right now. And, and until that's tamed, we're not going to get other issues. What's your sense? Well, and I, I think, once again, it's really important to realize that the reason we're under these inflationary pressures is the incredible dependence on fossil fuels uh, and the wild commodity price swings that we see with things like gasoline. So, you know, in, in a few years ago, you couldn't find a climate conversation on any of the major television stations. And I'm doing multiple interviews a day mm -hmm. on climate now. So I think there is a shift. People are recognizing, at least the people who are going through these extreme circumstances. But inflation mm -hmm. is also a, a critical, critical issue. And we need to connect the dots and say, well, we're going to solve inflation with, uh, you know, with a climate bill that is going to bring down the cost of energy right. for consumers and switch us over to cleaner, cheaper sources of energy. And I, it seems as if it's that first part that you just said that if you're going to incentivize that at the end of the day, the public doesn't want to spend more money for progress down the road. They've got to feel it in the short term. That's tough to deliver both, Senator. We honestly, I think we have a package uh, that we put together that is um, going to save people money and is going to buffer them from these fossil fuel price spikes. And so I, I think the What's missing is the recognition that the solution to many of our inflationary issues uh, really is some of the policies that are in that, that climate bill. Senator Martin Heinrich, Democrat from New Mexico, and as he's pointing out, New Mexico is seeing, seeing it front and center uh, with these horrible wildfires that they've been dealing with. Senator, appreciate you coming on, sharing your Thank perspective. You. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.